Hey everyone, Nick Dearbertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about error handling in Python, which will conclude our segment on going beyond an initial Python script, the tools and skills that we need in Python to go and build out financial models. So this is going to be a quick video. Uh, we're just going to be quickly uh, reviewing error handling. Uh, most people probably are not even going to need this. It's just something to be familiar with um, in Python because you may need it at certain points. Um, you know, definitely it comes up a lot more in general programming than in building financial models, but there are still cases where you may find it useful uh, for modeling. And then, you know, as you go outside the class and expand into other areas in Python, you'll find it useful as well. So, you know, at this point, if you've been following along and you've been working on all the labs and you've been, uh, you know, building out the, the models uh, and examples along with me, uh, then I'm sure you've seen errors coming up. I've also shown examples of errors, you know, syntax error, annotation error, name error, uh, you know, index error. Uh, there's so many different kinds of errors. Um, and when you hit an error in Python code, it stops the execution of the code. Wherever you're at, as soon as it throws the error, it's just done. It's just it's not going to execute anything after that. Um, and sometimes you're going to be going through your code and you're going to expect to get an error. Uh, that this error is actually something that um, is inherent to the way that the model works. Uh, it could be, you know, something like you could set it up that, you know, you're supposed to put, you know, a number of years as an input into the model and you want to add some validation such that if a user, uh, you know, gets less than, or it puts in less than, uh, zero for the number of years, then, you know, it could be you raising an error, uh, or catching the, the error that comes out of your program and, and then, you know, printing that out to the user, hey, make sure you pass a number greater than uh, zero for the number of years. Or, you know, it could be something that comes up just from the logic of your model where you do actually expect to see an error in some or, or all of the cases. Um, and you want to do something in response to that error instead of just having the code stop at that point. Uh, so here's the basic structure for error handling. Um, so um, the structure is what's called a try and accept clause. Um, and basically you try to do something and then if there's an error, then you're going to go into the accept. Um, so here, you know, we've got a list defined. It has two items, A and B. And then we're trying to uh, look up the 11th item from the list. Of course, the list only has two items. And so there is no 11th item. And so as we saw, you know, previously when covering lists, uh, that we're going to get an index error in that case, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, you run this code and it's just going to print out caught the error. Uh, it's not going to fail. Um, it's not going to show you any index error, it's just going to print caught the error. And that's because we tried to look up the 11th item in the list, and then this triggered the index error, uh, but then we have this accept clause. And so this accept clause says, you know, whatever exception you put here, it's going to look for that exception coming up within the try clause, and if it does, then we're all of a sudden going to be in this part of the logic. Um, so it's a totally different way to handle uh, the flow in your Python program versus, you know, like using conditionals or, or something like that to control flow. Um, it's, you know, if you get an error, we're going somewhere else in the code. Um, so um, there's a lot of different possible applications of this, and we'll look at an example here in the moment. Um, and then you'll notice it's just like, uh, you know, every other kind of logical block that we've defined in Python, you know, be it for loops, be it if statements, uh, function definitions, class definitions, 
uh, now also try and accept. Again, it's you put uh, the you know lo the control statement and then a colon and then on the next line you indent and then whatever is indented is going to be running as part of that block, that logical block. So the try block has this code in it, the accept block has this code in it because they are indented. And the try and the accept have to be on the same indentation level, just like when we looked at if and else, right? Like if and else are like part of the same um, construct here. And so then the same thing with try and accept um, they go together, and so they should be on the same indentation level. So then, um, you know, just thinking about an example here. Uh, so let's say, you know, you've got, um, you know, two different annuities. Uh, they both pay $100 a year for five years, uh, but one you're getting in year zero, and one you're getting in year three. Um, so we can define this annuity as just a list of 100 five times. And here's a nice little shortcut that will let you define something repetitive like that. This will expand out to being a list with 100 in it five times. Um, and then we want to figure out what are the cash flows overall, you know, going up to 15 years um, or, you know, however many years. Um, so here's some code which is able to uh, you know, get to that result using error handling. Um, so here we're looking at 10 years um, and we've got these two different annuities. Um, this second annuity is gonna start in year four. Uh, the first annuity or year three or year zero, whatever you wanna call the first year zero or one, it's gonna start three years later for the second annuity. Um, and we wanna ultimately get the cash flows at the end, right? So three periods of getting just 100 and then two periods where they're both paying, we get 200, and then three more periods at just 100, and then zero for the remaining periods is the result that we would expect of putting these two things together. Um, so one way you might think to put them together is, okay, let me loop through the number of years, and then let me go through the annuities and add up, you know, looking up that year's value from the annuity. Um, but, um, the issue there is then that um, the annuities uh, don't have equal lengths here. This one is only five long, this is eight long. And so as you get uh, to year six, all of a sudden it's trying to look up the sixth year in this annuity, which has only five items. And that's gonna give you an index error. Um, so then if we have this try accept handling in here, uh, if we get the index error, well, we're just not going to do anything. That's what pass means is just, uh, you know, go on ahead. Uh, I don't want to do anything here. Um, because in that case, you know, we don't need to add anything. The annuity is done. So we just want it to keep going without throwing an error. Um, and so then when we do that, uh, then we ultimately get the output that we would expect of these two annuities combined. So that's a quick overview on error handling in Python. Um, definitely, uh, you know, it's not going to be super common in financial modeling to hit this until you get to, you know, definitely more complex uh, models. Um, but a good pattern to know regardless. Um, and if you're unsure about whether you should be applying it or you have questions about applying it, just feel free to, to ask me about that um, and I can give more context there. So that wraps up our segment on going beyond an initial Python script uh, where now we have the basic uh, Python knowledge that we need such that we can go and build out the dynamic salary retirement model fully in Python for our next major segment. So thanks for listening and see you next time.